Welcome, welcome, welcome to Sunday School on the Go. This is your host, Prophetess Denise Kelly. Um, I hopped on the wrong meeting, y'all. So just, just sharing that, sharing that out there. We're gonna go ahead and go ahead and get started. Um, although nobody's on, it's fine. You know, everybody has things to do, but we're gonna pray and we're gonna get everything started as people come in. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for your precious blood that is shed on Calvary. Lord God, we're asking that you would just touch each and every person, Lord God, that is a, attached to this ministry, Father God. We love you and appreciate you so much. We're praying, Lord God, for those that are sick, Lord God, that you would give them a speedy recovery, that you would heal their bodies, Lord God, that you would heal their minds, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Those that are seeking salvation, I pray for salvation for them in the name of Jesus. All of us, Lord God, that are here, Lord God, to hear your word, I pray that something is said or done, Lord God, to make your walk easier, to help you to be able to do what you need to do. Lord, I love you and appreciate you oh so much, Lord God. This has always been about you, Father. And Lord, we appreciate you today. All those that are traveling, Lord God, we're praying for traveling grace and mercy, Father God. We just thank you for what you're getting ready to do this morning. It's in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Hear my cry, oh God. To my prayer, tell from the corners of the earth, I cry to the unseen when I walk, and when I to the rock that is higher than I. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Let me dwell in your house always. For you have been free A refuge by your power And from my enemy You've been my strong tower And when I know And when I know Lead me to the rock That is higher than I Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Oh, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Let me dwell in your house. Oh, I will go to the rock. 
is by Janice Gaines, Lead Me. It is one of one of my favorite songs. Um, she began, as she begins to minister, it just, it's something about that song, man. It's just something about that song that just gets me in the mood. It gets me going. It gets me started because a lot of times we leaning on each other. We leaning on our own understanding, which God tells us not to do. So sometimes we just got to be reminded. We just have to understand that no matter what the situation is, no matter what's going on, I have a rock. I have an advocate just for me that can help me to do what I need to do for God. That helps me stand sometimes. Sometimes even helps me sleep because I, my mind continues to go and run about things that are going on. But God said, uh, he said that he never slumbers nor he sleep. Uh-oh, I got excited. Hold on, let me calm back down. Something about that song just reminds me that God Lead me to the rock that's higher than me. That's God. He's talking about him. That song is talking about God. Amen, amen, amen. We are about to get this thing started. We are getting this thing started. Uh, Richard, it looks like it's just me and you. My husband is here, but he's over there. Uh, his, he's not feeling well, so it's just the three of us. And we just have to thank God for being God. Today, today's message is, is, is one of triumph and i want I, I it's one that's gonna really help us to do well uh, uh again today you know to be able to be encouraged uh one more time as we continue to to look at things so we're we're looking at second chronicles the uh 20th chapter chronicles in the old testament the 20th chapter and we're just gonna read just a few verses although we're gonna be talking about several we're gonna read verses 13 through 20 it's just seven look seven little old verses there but we're gonna read that and we're just gonna thank god for being god because see there's something about huh, Something about the name Jesus. Okay, let me let me calm down just a little bit. But when God is in the house, when God is in the place, it just gets you excited about what God is going to do. So we're going to read the scripture first. We're going to do uh, we're going to do a little different today. We're going to read the scriptures that way. It's out of there. So when the Lord just move, we just going to go from there. So we're looking at Second Chronicles, the twentieth chapter. Are you there, Richard? Or do you need some minute, a minute? You're there. Okay. So you read the first, you read half, and then I'll read the other half. So we're just reading verses 13 uh, through 20. So you read about three or uh, four, and then I'll read the rest. <clears throat> and all Judah stood before the Lord with the little ones, their wives and their children, then upon Jahaziel, Jahaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, and Levite of the son of Asaph, Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye, all Judah, 
and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid, nor be dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. And I'm reading Tomorrow. the New King James Version. Okay, go, go ahead. Huh? You want to keep going? No, no you, you go ahead. Not, I was trying to read half. I'll read 16. Tomorrow, okay. go ye down against them. Behold. Uh, let me read that over. Tomorrow, go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. And verse 17 says, you, and I'm reading the New King James Version, so it says, you will not need to fight in this battle. Uh-oh. Yeah, I want to read that with art just one more time. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Jerusalem, O Judea and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all of Judea and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And then the Levites of the children of Kahatis and, and the children of Karatis, um, that's neither here nor there, uh, stood up to praise the Lord of Israel with voices loud and high. So they rose early in the morning and went to the wilderness of Tekiah. And they, as they went, to Je went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and ye shall be established. Believe his prophets, and ye shall prosper. Amen. 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 The title, the title of today's lesson, we are doing the regular, we're going through the Sunday school book again, and we're, the title of today's lesson is Faith and Encouragement. Sometimes we need to be encouraged as we go along this journey. And so today's, what well, God shared with me, so I'm going to start out with 1, 21 and 24. She comes to the number show. I'm gonna calm myself down. I'm gonna try. Anyway, so one is the number of unity. The number 21 is the number of distress. Ooh. Encouragement, distress. Let's talk about that. Then the number 24, which is the year that we're in, is the priesthood or spiritual government. And so God gave me this, this word of knowledge today to just, He said, remind. To remind them that endurance is the hardest part of the battle of battling the enemy. We are always looking for the light at the end of the tunnel. Many times the tunnel is blocked with our own issues. That's why we cannot see. But God is working it out for us. God said, be still. Position yourself and see God work it out. God wanted to remind us that he is here waiting for us to trust and believe that he is God in every situation. Amen. Amen. So that's our, our word for the day, the prophecy for the day, the word of knowledge that God is wanting to remind us. And the title of the lesson again is Faith and Encouragement. We're in a series of talking about faith and how that affects us and how it's extremely important in our day-to-day -day lives. See, the problem with a lot of times we see with, uh, and let me not get on the uh, thing of churches, but a lot of times we forget that just because we got saved that we don't have problems. But there are many times, not only do we have problems, the problem, the great part about that is we now have an advocate, which is Jesus, on our side to help us to make it through whatever situation we're in. Amen, amen, amen. Let me just... 
try try my best to calm down because this word began to minister to me this morning. It began to speak to me in such a way to just remind me that I am not alone, that I've never been alone, that God is with me. And so he wanted to encourage me uh, as we talk about uh, Jehoshaphat this morning. Now, see, we're, we're looking at the scriptures in 2 Chronicles, which is during the period of about 872 BC to 848 BC. So that's way back, way back in the day. Um, and it's the word went to Chronicles because that's considered to be Chronicles is is like a mirror of first Kings and it's a mirror of uh, Samuel, but it's the parts that have been omitted. And so that's why we are looking at that uh, this part of the scriptures and this, uh, the chapter that we're reading, they say they don't know who the author is, uh, but we just want to be reminded that uh, God is faithful. God is faithful. Okay, I'm going to calm myself down. I'm going to try. I, I don't know where this is going to go this morning. I'm just going to be honest because God is like pouring all kind of stuff into me. So we're just going to follow God. Amen. I don't follow myself. I don't write my own scripts. I don't do any of those things. I do write notes, so I don't, and I, I just show y'all, I, I do write notes, I do all of that, I do my study, I do what I'm supposed to do, but I don't know which way God's going to go, so I'm warning you ahead of time. We may be skipping around, but whatever it is, it's food for the soul. It's exactly where God wants us to go. And so, in the as I began to do this study, I began to talk about, uh, you know, how Jackie Robinson was one of the people that, you know, uh, helped us in the civil rights movement to move into or to uh, provoke change. You know, during that time, he he helped us to provoke change. He also reminds us, you can do it, that you can overcome obstacles. So as we are encouraging one another, we have to be mindful of the people that paved the way for us. You know, and I, I often say this to uh, people, when I used to sit on the bus in school, I would sit at the back because I like sitting at the back because I'm nosy for one. But so I sit in the back. Right. And then I heard one time this one person asked me, Kevin Bell, he asked me, he said, uh, he said, you know, that Rosa Parks sat on the bus so you can sit at the front. I said, no, Rosa Parks sat on the bus so I can sit where I wanted. And I'm sitting in the back. So I'm just saying sometimes we take these things of. The, the accolades of what people have done for us. And we do, uh, we say that these are the reasons. No, 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 no. The real reason is so that she can sit down on the bus and not have to give up her seat. Mm, we ain't gonna say that part. We're gonna leave that part. The rest don't know the history, know what happened, right? And so what I, I said, I'll let you say this. Times, there are times when God has done things for us in the scripture. He has laid a, a way for us. He paved some ways for us so that we can be faithful. He paved the way for us so that we can be encouraged. He paved a way for us so that we don't have to be lost the rest of our lives. So as we begin to look at Second Chronicles, uh, the 20th chapter, we're going to talk about some of those things because we know no matter what's going on, we know that the enemy does not want us to succeed. All right now. So he does not want us us to succeed. He wants us to fail. And the reason why sometimes we fail is because we forget that God is faithful unto death. God never left us nor forsake us. He was always there for us. Our problem is sometimes we get sidetracked. Sometimes we move on another way. Ooh. I felt that right there. If you could be in here with me, you would see the the, 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 the smoke up in here. That smoke up in, well, at least that's what we used to call it when we be in church and we see God's spirit moving. But we're going we gonna to talk a little bit more about what's really happening here. So as we look at this scripture, so so the scripture that we read, there's a, pre, a preference before that. So in verse 5, all the way up to verse 12, he Jehoshaphat does something. So let's talk about what Jehoshaphat did. So Jehoshaphat was facing this big old problem. He had these people coming up against him in war. And so he was he was concerned. He didn't have enough people to really, uh, you know, to win. And, and so he began to do what many of us do. Now, uh, some of us do some things like this. Well, first of all, they, they get afraid and then they don't want to move and then they don't want to do anything. They don't want to say anything. But Jehoshaphat, in the midst of his concern, in the midst of his fear, he knew where to go. 
So he began to pray. So he prayed. So in the first uh, part of that scripture, those first seven verses, he prays. He begins to remind God uh, what God did for him in the past. God, you did this. You did that. Uh, you defeated this and you defeated that. Sometimes in the midst of our prayer, we have to remind God, God, you did it for me before. I know you can do it again. You did it for your people. I know you can do it again. Hey, glory to God. Glory to God. So sometimes in the prayer, but in the midst of his prayer, not only did he say God did it for him, not only did he get into the mode of saying, well, you know, God is successful. You know, God has done this before and he'll do it again. But he did it in a way that's different than the way sometimes we pray. So we, we begin to pray sometimes with our faith. So we pray faithless prayers. So we're asking God, we're telling God he did this, but then we don't believe him. There are times when we must pray faithful prayer. We have to pray and believe. We have to pray and believe. So Jehoshaphat went through that. He began to tell God what he did before him. And he knows, he said, God, you said these people weren't going to be able to defeat us. You said that the, these things weren't going to be able to happen. And, and yes, we made some mistakes because he did tell them to annihilate the land. And sometimes they would hold on to folks. So, hey, that's just how people do sometimes. But So they didn't really follow all of the script. That's the reason why the people are coming back up against them. But as we begin to, as he began to pray, not only did he pray, he worshiped. He worshiped in the midst of his prayer. He gathered the families together. See, that's sometimes, uh, uh, y'all know this, this uh, saying, a family that prays together, what? Stays together. I, 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 it's in the scripture, but it's not written like that. But God said that if you begin to call upon my name, if you begin to have faith that I can do it, uh, I will show you the way out. If you listen to me, I will show you. And so as we, as he, he began to pray and they began to worship. And, and, and so there's something about, hey, glory to God, glory to God. I just thank God for like the song I was saying in the beginning. Because that was the beginning of our worship, beginning to allow God to come in and manifest himself in our lives and manifest himself in this uh, Sunday school. So now I've got to calm down because I just heard God say, ask the question. <laughs> okay, so I got to ask the question. So the first question I want to ask you is what are some of the things that you do when you are beginning to face a crisis as a Christian? You said, what crisis am I facing as a Christian? So what, what do you do when you're facing a crisis? It doesn't right, right. Yeah. I do the same thing Jehoshaphat did. I know exactly where to go, and that's exactly what I do. I start praying. I know who to turn to. I don't care. I know who to turn to. And it's in his hand whether I have victory or defeat. And even in defeat, he's merciful. So I know where to go. Yeah, I know exactly where to go. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So as we begin <clears throat> to face these crises, we know that we have to be able, first, you got to know your source. Now, I, I, I want to say this right here. I want to say when I need uh, some, some finances, of course, I really go to God. But like, say, for instance, if I need some somebody to help me with my finances, I don't go to a broke person. Okay, hey, hey. hey. I, and, and when I say broke, I'm not just talking about uh, broke with the money. I'm talking about spiritually broke. Like they ain't even got no prayer life. Okay. Anyway, so I'm saying all that to say this. You must know your source. You must know who you can go to to get this or to get that or to do this or to do that. Or you go, you don't go to people that don't pray and say, can you pray for me? You just don't do that. So we know that God is, is, is our ultimate resource. He is the one that can do it all for us. Amen. And I love what Jehoshaphat did in the first seven verses. So he went to the house of God, right? He went into God. He went to get in God's presence. He began to pray. And then even at the big old massive prayer service that went on, he began to worship. I can just imagine when there's some, sometimes when I'm in a situation and I just begin to worship God and be, begin to sing just the song, you know, lead me to the rock, you know, as I begin to worship God, I, there's a, a 
faith that's lifted up inside of me. And the words, the prayer words begin to come out as I begin to worship, as I release it unto God, as I lay it at his feet. Then I begin to feel lifted up like as if I'm getting ready to, to fly. And so because God, I know where to go. I know who my source is. As I begin to live, get, give it to God and leave it there. That's another thing. When we're trusting and believing in God, we have to be able to leave it there. We have to know what is our part. So a lot of times we don't know our part. So let's look at part of this verse. Let's see. Let's look at verse. Uh, let's just look at verse 14 as he began to talk to him. So he, he begins to look. At verse 14, and I'm going to reread it just, you know, just for context purposes. So in verse 14, he says, he says, then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, uh, son of Zechariah, Benia, son of Zerah, Manate, uh, the Levite of uh, Asphath, and in the midst of the, in the midst of the assembly. So he, and he knew where to go. So he went to his source and, and the spirit of God came down. The spirit of God rested upon them. Uh, I just want to be, be mindful that sometimes in prayer, sometimes in worship, we have this spirit of God that comes. Uh, in, in our case, they, they rested upon them. But many times because we have the spirit of God living on the inside of us, it bubbles up from the inside of us. And so as we begin to allow the spirit of God to speak, let God speak. Let God speak. Don't speak your fears. Don't speak your anxieties. Speak what God's word says. Speak. Okay. Amen. Amen. So the next thing, so so in, in, in the next verse, I see something. I see something. So in verse, in verse, in verse uh 15, he says, he says, he tells them to listen. A lot, a lot of times, whoo, glory to God, we don't listen. God is saying something. God is speaking to us, but we're not listening. And so as he began to talk to the, the multitude, as he began to talk to the inhabitants of Judea, the first thing he says, which eliminates your prayer, let me say that, it eliminates your prayer if you do this. He said, don't be afraid. And don't be dismayed. The battle is not yours. A lot of times we, we believe that we, we, we're afraid. And I'm not saying that you can't start out afraid, but oh. you got to know who your source is. You got to remember where God is in your life. So he tells them that fear, and we know this, fear Eliminates faith. He first doesn't push out the fear. Not saying that you can't un recognize that stuff and get ready to happen. We're not uh, dumbfounded or we're not stupid. We realize that something's happening. But it does not negate. It does not overtake. It will not erase my faith in who God is. Tells him, don't be afraid. And then he tells him why. Why not be afraid? Why? Because I got you. The battle is mine, not yours. Now, how many of us would go into a fight and, and, and knowing that, that somebody else is going to take care of it? Why would we get in there and fight? We fight through our prayer. We fight through our worship. And then we allow God to manifest himself in the midst of it all. And so as we begin to look at that, I love the way that that scripture empowers us. It lets us know that there are times when God is speaking and there are times when we speak. So we have to allow God, we have to lay it at his feet. We tell him what's going on and then we allow God to speak into our situation. And sometimes I'm just going to be honest. God says some stuff against myself God says some stuff and I be thinking if you could just see you can't see my face but I'm just I'll be like what <laughs> is that that's what you want me to do 
because it's not, it doesn't make sense to us because one, we're not God. So there's times when God will say stuff that's scripturally based. So let me not get too crazy. That's scripturally based. And we thinking, I don't know about that. Love, think about some of the scriptures that we, we know and look. Love your enemy. <laughs> what? They try to take me out of here. You know what I'm saying? Those that persecute you. Some of the stuff God be telling us to do, I'm just being honest. I be thinking, looking up to God, and I be thinking, for real? For real, God? That, that how you want me to, to handle that? But God is the one that fights the battle. He is the one that brings it all to pass. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? I know where I would be. I would be dead if God wasn't with me. But because of God being with me, I am able to understand some things. I am able to give it to God. So my next question to you is this. So my next question is, is this question here. How long does it take you in general to release your situation to God? Well, that normally, well, again, I know who, who has all power in the situation and I know who gonna, who's going to judge the situation on my behalf, regardless, but, uh, just to just let it go and let them have it and detach from it is, it's hard in certain situations because of the gravity of the situation, the danger of the situation, you know, just depends, you know, if you're about to be homeless tomorrow and you're in front of God, like, yo, God, you know why, but these folk tomorrow morning, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of hard to, you know, detach from that because you're going to, you got to figure out where you're going to put your stuff at. But God said he's always faithful. So it, it just depends. It just depends. Now, even when we struggle, in our souls, there still has to be an anchor there that above all else knows. Even if I am put out tomorrow, I'm gonna be just fine. You know what I'm saying? That this is obviously the path that's gonna get me to the good that I really need to get to. And I need to make this adjustment. That part, though he slay me, or even, uh, he, uh, even if he doesn't deliver us, we still won't bow down to your God. That type of attitude, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter what happens. I'm still going to stand and believe because, you know, he's the one that's in ultimate control anyway of this right here. So, and what happens to this? So, you know, if it happens, you know, it, it must have been good with him. So to let it go, yeah, it's hard as a man sometimes, but you still need that anchor to know, even though you're struggling, what's going on. Yep. So, Brother Vinoy, do you want to answer a question? Or are you not in position to answer at this point? And do you need me to repeat I didn't it? Pick up, I didn't pick up everything so, that you said. So the question is, how long does it take you to release your situation, your circumstance, whatever it is that's bothering you, how long does it take you to release that to God? Almost immediately. I, I, I try not to practice holding on to, you know, that because worrying about it's not going to help you any. And if you're not qualified or whether you think you're qualified, you know what I mean? You got to put it, you know, you don't, <clears throat> where I look at it is that uh, either you're going to be dependent on them or you're not. That's it. You know, and no matter what arises, you know what I mean, he has the means and ability to uh take do it, see through it, take it through it and uh rectify it. So that's just at the end of the day. I, I try not to you know, I try to always immediately hand that over. You know. Well, amen. Amen, bro. Amen, bro. I have to, 
I am, I'm like in the middle of both of y'all because there are many times when I hand it over immediately because I know I can't have that. I don't know what that is there. And then there's times where I'm like, I, I can handle this. And I'm like, Lord, you can to show me how to do it, you know, and I hold on and then I'll release it. And I've even have, and the reason why I can tell y'all leave it there is because there are times I put some stuff on the altar and I went back and got it. And then I had to go back and put it back on the altar. So I said, I like to say this, there are times in our journey and times in our struggle that we are in both places. We're at the spectrum of God. I'm going to release it to you. I trust you. I know you're going to do it. And then we're at this point where we're wrestling with God about some situation. God, you sure, you know, and, 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 and there's nothing wrong with the journey. The journey helps us to get from faith to faith, precept to precept, line up on line. That's what helps us get there. What helps us get there is realizing where you are in God and that you know you don't need to stay there. You got to move on and progress in him. That's the one great thing about God. God is a progressive God. God is not a God that's going to leave you back there. Now, I'm not saying that there are times that we, go, we progress or we digress. But there is always going to be forward movement in God because God doesn't, we, we don't operate on our own time. God doesn't operate on our time. He operates on times that, that, that are beneficial to the whole. Now I'm going to tell y'all a secret and I know y'all didn't know this, but your life is not your own. It belongs to God. God uses your testimony, your life to speak to others, to draw them unto him. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Not unto Frank, not unto Denise, not unto Bernard, not unto Richard, not unto Kelly. He said he would draw all men unto himself. And so as we begin to look at Jehoshaphat doing, doing the thing, so he starts out, he starts out what, perfect because he realizes this is too much for him. So he gives it. He begins to worship and pray and give it to God. And then God, see, this is, this is what, I mean, first of all, I want to uh, point this out here. We do not know how long this took. The scripture, a lot of times gives us uh, these scriptures, but we really don't know how long it took to get to the part where God began to speak to him. And it's important for us to point that out because when you realize that everything is not instant, some things are pro process, then you can understand that there are times where we got to wait, times that we have to endure. And then some things are instant, like, like that. Don't take no time. So we don't really know how long it took, but he did get to the point after he began to worship and pray where the spirit of God came in. The spirit of God is what breaks yokes. The spirit of God is what allows us to be able to even really hear and understand God and what he wants us to do and the position he wants us to go in. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. Sometimes we operate in fear and not faith. I'm pointing that out because there's people that, you know, that need to know that, that are not where we are. We need to give them the opportunity to get there, wherever they are. Thank you God. know what, because that's why I look at God cross-eyed sometimes, or cross-eyed sometimes, because, you know, if God said he would do something in a certain situation, he'll do it in that situation every single time. And when the situation is summing up to be something other than what God said he would do every time. And the closer it gets, you know, at the time draws near, my eyes get more crossed and crossed and crossed and crossed because I'm looking at God like, okay, God, what's really happening, man, you know? But that's the exact reason why I get an attitude too sometimes because <laughs> things go a certain way. And I know as a son of God, you know, I have authority over all this stuff, right? And if it, again, if it persists a little too long, I'm starting to really look at God like, what's going on? But 
to the truth of it, he ain't never left. He ain't never let me down. It ain't nothing ever, ever, ever. Right? So I just be tripping. That's all. I just be tripping. And I go ahead, Vinoy. No, at the same time, the big thing, the things that are really too big for us to even deal with, those are the easy ones to give to them. Yeah. It's these small, small things that uh, I have a tendency to wonder, you know, I'll, I'll place it there, but I also, at the same time, uh, work towards whatever the remedy is, you know, at the same time. You know, I just don't sit on my hands, you know what I mean, waiting on him to fix it either, if that makes sense. Because he has given us uh, wisdom to work through some things. But, you know, at the same time, I always look at it as uh, um, either we have that hope in him or not. You know, so... But the big things are easy, the smaller ones, you know, those are the things that are like, should I, am I, should I, what, you know what I mean? Uh, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Am I taking take the point of myself to do what I need to do? We need to be going north. Uh, versus, so I got to find that sweet spot, I guess, so to speak, to, uh, because like I said about, uh, I, don't, I, I, wasn't, I don't know if that was me and Rich talking about that, but he, you know, Moses, the people were crying out to God when uh, they were pressed in by the, you know, the, was that the Red Sea? Mm -hmm. They were pressed in at the Red Sea, and at the same time, they had, you know, they had the Egyptians behind them, which they still had the pillar of fire in between them, but they were crying out to God. God's like, you know, why are you crying out to me? You know what I mean? Move forward. So sometimes it's, it's just about us moving forward with the confidence or the faith that God has already got it, that God is going to open up that Red Sea so we can cross it. You know what I mean? There's no doubt that it's there, you know. But those are the big ones. You see what I'm saying? The small ones, you know, we have to, like I say, continue to move forward as well. So, But I always throw it up. You know, I, I, I don't have the uh, time nor the wherewithal to be wrestling with whether God got it or not. <laughs> you, if, you know what I mean? Because there's just too much involved in am I, can I, will I, you know what I mean? And all the half glass, the glass half empty mindset, you know, he says, you know, <clears throat> I apply that when he says we don't, as those who have no hope. And, they, you know, what they, we know he's talking about, you know, death, but. I mean, it, it it applies in every instance of your life. We don't do those things as those who don't have no hope. Amen. Amen. I want to point out another scripture because I want to say this. After he did, <clears throat> he prayed, he worshiped, he did everything. The word of the Lord, spirit of the Lord came. But in verse verse 15, God says it says it all. Uh, verse, verse is it 17. In verse 17, he tells them what to do. A lot of times we just are not, we're moving too fast to hear him. He tells them right there what to do. You will not need to fight in this battle. He says, position yourselves. Stand still. So get in a position. He can get in a position so you can hear me first. Get in a position, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Sometimes we're moving way too fast, and God is trying to talk to us. And I know when it comes, I think about Peter because I feel like I'm a Peter, slashing off ears and walking on water. I, I, I feel like I'm a Peter. Sometimes I move, and then I get caught up with the waves, but I moved and I was given permission to move, but I lost sight of Christ. He gave me permission to move, but I, my focus began, I began to focus on the winds and the waves after I got out there. And I lost sight of Christ. But he tells them, position yourself, stand still and see. After he prayed, he got an answer. 
after he worshiped? The answer came. But like I said, sometimes them answers, you be thinking, what? What, Lord? <laughs> are, you, are you serious? I mean, it's the truth. Sometimes God tell us stuff. And you be thinking. So, and sometimes we, our own situation, our own situation clouds our, our, our memory or clouds, clouds our faith. Because when God tells you, I, look, I'm just use this as a, a great example. I got $50, right? And God tells, I only have 50. I'm going to put that out there. And God tells me to take my 50. Let's just say he said, give it to an enemy. God tells me to bless somebody with that 50. In your mind, what do you think? Y'all talk to me. Talk to me. Am I the only one to think? I thought, get rid of this 50. What the heck am I going to do? <laughs> Initially, I'm saying, talk to me. Talk to me about that. Hold up. First off, uh, he don't will he he ain't willing you know he don't want you to be hurting in someone else's ease that's Paul's teaching you know you don't have to give to your own hurt ma'am so if you need that fifty you keep that fifty in your pocket okay because that ain't that ain't what he said secondly he he wants you to give out of your you know how how much he's prospered you now you granted you can make a sacrifice and God will look out but don't get to crying when you need milk and you ain't got no money. Remember your sacrifice. God provided. You chose to get that sacrifice. But he don't want you to give to your hurt. That's not, that's not. I mean, you got a problem with that idea. Take that up with Paul. Paul said that. Okay. So just, yeah, that's my idea. So if that's my last, and I've done it. Don't get me wrong. Because I need something. I'm, you know what, God? I'm going to go ahead and plant this because I need a whole lot more. So this ain't, if it don't meet the need, it's a seed is what I've heard before. So plant that joker. Um, I've done it, but if I need that twenty dollars, I ain't giving it to nobody. I give you a dollar too, but I ain't gonna hurt myself because I need some change. That's just real, and God ain't stop blessing me as a result either. Brother Benoit, talk to me. Talk to me. Oh shoot! Uh, that's a wrestling for me. Uh, because sometimes, uh, I don't know, I, we're not going to say as a man or a woman, we have, you know, this balancing balancing that we're trying to do, with, you know, especially when we're talking about bills and things of that nature. But when the Lord tells me to do something, we're not, we're not talking about just, you know, uh, ties and all that, but when he tells you to do something, you try to, you know, I've, I've learned uh, to take heat, even though I don't always do it. You know, but sometimes those things about whether you are trusting the Lord to do what he says he's going to do. You know, so I have to be reminded that, you know what I mean? Hey, give what I'm, give what I'm going to give. And like you say, we're talking about out of not not out of necessity, but out of what you know, what we have, uh, what He has placed in our heart to give, and let the Lord put that meet, let the Lord meet that gap because He's going to do it, you know, because He says He's never seen the righteous forsaken nor His children begging for bread. You know what I mean? And that's what David said. You know what I mean? So there is truth in that. And at the same time, kind of like, I mean, you have to use practical wisdom. But when you're led by the Spirit to do something, it's best to do it. But that means it's not a wrestling in there because, I mean, I wrestle like that all the time. You know, I need to, I'm balancing the books, you know, on my own. You know what I mean? And leaving out what, leaving out God's house is balancing it. You get what I'm saying? Instead mm -hmm. of give it his off the top, whatever I deem that to be, or whatever, I mean, that's between you and God, give it his off the top and allowing him to do what he said he's going to do. You know? He said his word does not return in void. That's what he said. 
Is that that's which right. I've sent my Fort Worth report to do? He said that's what that that's what he's going to mm-hmm. accomplish. You know what I mean? So, if you do what he tell you to do, then you can go. If which is well, I'm not going to say if because it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. He's not going to do what he says he's going to do. Mm-hmm. But let's say it, it. Let's say it tarries or whatever. Then you can go to him. Then he says, "Come, let us reason together." You know what I mean? Then you can bring it, Lord. I did what you told me to do. You know what I mean? And then he would certainly, if you're willing to listen, give you the answer to whatever it is that you're trying to, you know what I mean? But he he, he invites us to come to him. And like I say, he said, come let us reason together. You know what I mean? Bring, bring your case to me. You know what I mean? I had to do that, you know, looking for my release. Looking for that, you know what I mean? This is what your word said. You, I just said you, you know what I mean? You said you're watching over your word to perform it. You said that you exalt your word before above your name. You said that. I didn't say that. You know what I mean? So you can bring that to the table, to his courts, because he says that, I mean, doesn't he have courts? That is one day in your court? That a thousand elsewhere? Right. Okay. But I'm not oh. saying it doesn't come without a rasp. It comes with a rasp because we have been taught to be self-sufficient beings, even though that's the truth told you. We don't know where it's going left or right. We don't know what's ahead left or right. You know what I mean? He's, he invites us to be able to, you know, be led so you can get ahead of the curve. Huh. That's good. That's preach right there. Yeah. I'm still at so, it. Right. Don't but preach we that wanna, no time soon. We, <laughs> right. Right. But we want to wait till we end the curve. You know what I mean? But he wants to get us ahead of the curve. Anyway, that's what I think about it. But it's yeah, it's always a wrap. Do I always do it? No, but do am I always reminded? Absolutely. I have I always reminded and I revert back to but let me let me do this first. You know what I mean? Let me do this first. And and he does what he says he's gonna do. Period. Amen. Amen. Richard, I didn't preface that. I had more than 50. I just only had 50 in my hand. So, <laughs> but it was my 50. And I was like, okay, are you sure? You know, but, uh, you know, I, <laughs> I said that to say, because sometimes as Christians, we, we, we are not super Christians. I just want y'all to know there's struggles. There's trials and tribulations. Those are things we have to go through. And can't nobody tell you about your faith. Remember I prefaced the one time the man said something about if you ain't got $5, you can't stay at the offering table now. You can't got $5, you might want to check your faith. No, sir, I don't have to check my faith. My faith is not always monetary. And God will bless me. Sometimes I'll give monetarily and God will bless me in some other kind of way. That doesn't mean that uh, God didn't bless me. He did Maybe he blessed me to somebody said, hey, I need you to do this, that, and the other, and I'll pay you this, that, and the other. You know, God always returns what we've put out for him. Just keep that in mind. I just want to throw that out there because I know sometimes we struggle with that. And I want everybody to remember this is a process. This is a journey. This is a, a one step at a time, precept upon precept, line upon line journey. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we are. Oh, one last thing, and then uh, I'm gonna open it up for comments. So the last thing I want to say is to remember, uh, when facing, facing a crisis or faithing a process, just remember that faith is important. We have to keep the faith in there. That's pretty much it. Any comments? Any additional comments before we pray out? No comments. Okay, okay. All right. Brother Richard, can you pray us out? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Lord of grace, <clears throat> God of my mercy, thank you for this day. Thank you for every single day, actually. I appreciate everything you're doing. Every way you're setting us up. I'm going to include everybody else because I can be real selfish. Thank you for the way you're setting us up, God. 
<clears throat> I appreciate the way you look out every single day. Forgive me for the ways I overlook you and offend you. Thank you for forgiving me every time I come to you and acknowledge my wrongs. Thank you for overlooking every way that displeases you. You're the greatest God, the only true and living God. I'm glad you chose us to be a part, to take part with you for all eternity. <clears throat> Hurry back, prepare us before you come back so none of us are left. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. May God bless you this week. Uh, this week, we're looking at just endurance and encouragement. So encourage somebody this week. This, our, this is our uh, week of, of encouragement. So just encourage somebody that they're going to make it. They can do it this week. That's y'all's charge for the week. And we will see you back here on Wednesday. May God bless you and keep you as my prayer. Talk to you later. <laughs>